Transmission and Distribution Systems Part 1C, Primary Transmission Infrastructure. This is the third part of Topic 1 in the series of Transmission and Distribution Systems. And in this part, we will be discussing the main components of a primary transmission infrastructure, which are overhead transmission lines, along with some of the characteristics and factors that are important in their design. Now, in the previous part, we talked about the voltage levels and equipment in TND systems. And just to give you a glimpse of what's ahead, we have secondary distribution infrastructure in part 1D. In part 2, we'll have several conversations about basic power transmission infrastructure, overhead versus underground systems, transmission line models and representations, and transmission line parameter capacitance. Now, generally speaking, the main components of a overhead transmission line are conductors supports, insulators, cross arms, and miscellaneous components such as danger plates, phase plates, lightning arresters, anti-climbing wires, dampers. So the first and most important component of a overhead transmission line is the conductor, which is required to transport electric power from one end to another. Now, proper selection of conductor material is crucial as most of the cost is based on the conductors. The conductor materials should have high electrical conductivity. It should also have high tensile strength to bear the mechanical stress and have low center of gravity so it does not exert, exert much power um, per unit of volume on itself. And it should be economical. However, in reality, uh, no single conductor or material poses all of these qualities. And the best compromise among these factors has to be selected. Copper is no doubt the ideal conductor for transmission of electrical power owing to its great mechanical strength and more current carrying capacity than any other material. However, its cost is high and reserves are few. Now, aluminum has 60% the conductivity to that of copper, and it is relatively cheaper and lighter, giving it an edge over copper and therefore more commonly used. Now, aluminum alloys reinforced with steel, or ACSR, are also used to bolster the tensile strength and give better conducting properties. In the same way, galvanized steels are very high tensile strength, and it is used in areas where weather conditions are very abrupt. And cadmium copper is used for extremely long distances. Next, the supporting structure or poles or towers that support and carry the transmission lines should have high mechanical strength to endure the weight of the conductors. Low maintenance costs high durability and accessibility to conductors. And most common type of line supporters are steel poles, their wooden poles, RCC poles, and steel lattice towers. The choice of supporting structures for a case depends upon the line extent, cross-sectional areas, voltage, cost, local environmental conditions, and so forth. For long distance transmission purposes, steel towers are employed while wooden poles, steel poles, and reinforced concrete poles are used in cities for low voltage secondary distribution. Now steel towers can be up to 50 meters high and be placed among great spans of almost 370 to 460 meters. Another important parameter that we should be familiar with is the sag of a transmission line. A conductor stretching tightly between its supports will have high tension or stress and might end up breaking. Therefore, to reduce this excessive tension, the line are loosened up a bit and designed as such to have a dip or a sag. Now, the height difference between the lowest point of conductor and the point from where the conductor is attached is known as the sag. Now, before we talk about insulators, here is a pitch to support general pack. 
As you're watching this video, we hope you find it useful and engaging. General Pat creates video tutorials so people like you can learn about power systems easily and efficiently. Subscribe and become our donor on patreon.com slash General Pat to get voting rights on our next topic, patron first video releases, exclusive behind the scene content, scheduled webinars, Q&A sessions, and more. Look, the reality is very, very simple. We need your financial support to continue making these videos. So become our patron, get exclusive perks, and we can't wait to see you on the other side. Thank you for your support of General Pack, and we hope to see you as a patron. Now, moving on to insulators. Current from the line conductor should not flow to the ground through the line support, obviously. So it is imperative to provide insulation between conductor and line support. And insulators are used to provide that insulation to prevent leakage current. And they should have high resistance, high relative primitivity in order to avoid leakage current. Insulators should also be free from impurities and have a high ratio of puncture strength to flashover, which is a safety factor. Now, porcelain is the most commonly used material for insulators, but steatite and glass and certain special composite material could also be used. Now, the most widely used type of insulators include pin type and suspension type, both uh, made from glass and porcelain. Now, pin types are used for voltages up to 33 kV, after which suspension types are preferred. And pin type insulators carry the conductors on their top and have structures which consist of shed or petticoats which prevents insulations, while suspension type insulators are suspended in, uh, in ground and clamp the conductors from below. They consist of discs and porcelain, and up to 19 discs may be used for 400 kV lines. Other parts include cross arms, which are arms protruding from the tower to carry the conductor at a certain distance apart. The insulators we have discussed here are then attached to the edge of these cross arms. Other than this, lightning is also a serious problem for transmission lines and can potentially damage equipment due to surges and voltage fluctuation it causes. Therefore, lightning ar arresters are also installed on transmission lines and towers while ground wires are connected to the towers. Now in the next video, we will be discussing secondary transmission infrastructure and we will talk about this concept uh, related to the distribution side of the electrical power system.